What should Syracuse be looking at in terms of an opponent uh, in Purdue this weekend, a nooner on Saturday? Get excited, people. Week three is almost here. If Syracuse wins this one, I think they have to get a decent amount of votes. We'll talk about that and more on Locked On Syracuse. It's right now. Our Locked On Syracuse, your daily podcast on the Syracuse Orange, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Matt Bonaparte, Owen Valentine with you on your Wednesday episode. Thanks for making Lockdown Syracuse your first listen every day. We are free. We're available wherever you get your podcasts. This has got to be the most exciting week of the year thus far for Syracuse football. Facing oh, yeah. far and away the most talented opponent you will in the first five weeks. Yeah, five weeks. Uh this is the one that could make you ranked too. And I didn't I didn't think we were going to be in this position. I don't think a lot of people thought Syracuse football was going to be in this position. But hey, here we are, man. We're looking at a team that potentially could be incredibly talented. And if they go out and beat Purdue, those uh I don't know if you want to say conspiracies or um thoughts could be confirmed because this team is without a huge test thus far. But I think Penn State is that. Their only loss on the year, a four-point loss to the now uh, 22nd-ranked Penn State, uh, and then a huge 56 nothing win over uh, the Sycamores of Indiana State. So not much there. But, hey, still they've got a really, really talented team. Uh, they've got a quarterback who's yet to throw an interception in Aiden O'Connell. Uh, he's been really, really good for them. They've got a three-headed running back trio. Uh, and we'll talk about a little bit of what they lost on defense recently. But before we get into any of that, let's first talk about this. How big of a win is it for Syracuse if they take this one home? Well, you're throwing me off. I thought we were going to finish the episode with that. But we'll, oh, we'll go right from the right get-go. Right. Start it off. This is incredibly huge. We just talked about it. If they win this game, they are very realistically in this conversation to be a ranked team, if not a ranked team, after this week. This is gigantic. There was not a thought in my mind that thought this team in week three was going to be a ranked program, and that is a testament to how well they have played through the first two weeks. And if they can get this win, that would be absolutely massive. I remember when we tweeted after the UConn game, you know, is this a ranked team after this game? The you know, a resounding answer was yes. And I forget who it was, but someone said briefly, who cares if this is a team that gets a number at any point next to their name, Huge they are outperforming this season. They are really, really doing everything you want to see, right? What was the threshold that you were looking for this year? Six wins. That was all that mattered. Get six wins, get to a bowl. There was no threshold of get back into the top 25. This is all bonus. That's house money right now uh, because with the pace that they're on, if they can get this game, that is gigantic because Purdue is not a walkover game. It's not a blowover game. Uh, it's it's a really, really solid team that plays a solid schedule. You know, your Big Ten Conference is not incredible at the moment, but is still very solid, and Purdue is – you know, right in the middle of that pack right now, we were just talking, we were looking at a, a Big Ten power ranking right now, and Purdue was at sixth on that list. This is a quality win, a really, really high quality win, and it does, I believe, propel you into the top 25, which says endless things about the importance of this game, that that is even on the docket of conversation we're having this week. Totally. Uh, and I think going into this week, there are two camps, two uh, schools of thought. One is that maybe Syracuse beat a Louisville team that wasn't that good. Uh, and they go in and they beat UConn. Great. Now Purdue's going to come to town and pummel them because they're way better. And Syracuse is going to get put in its place. I think that there's a large group of people who believe that. And I don't yeah. think it's an outlandish thing to believe because early in the season, we don't really know how good anybody is. And it tends to, to be the, the case that Big Ten teams 
uh, are a little bit more talented than, than the average ACC team. So that's a fair thing to believe. Uh, the other side of that coin is Syracuse fans that are sitting there going, we know what we have in this team. Uh, there's a lot of talent. Schrader is different this year. Sean Tucker's the best running back in America. This defense is really, really tough to get through. Purdue's going to have a fight on Saturday. Win or lose, Syracuse is going to make it close. Uh, and I think a lot of people believe Syracuse takes home a win. Uh, and they're, and Syracuse is picking up steam as a program uh, that I don't think a lot of other – I don't think anybody expected because – it's been three years now of disappointment and everybody kind of said, all right, the hype of 2018 has officially weaned going into 2022 and it's over and you should no longer think about Syracuse ever playing football. It's a basketball school, if you can call it that. Um, and hey, they're shocking the world right now. They're shocking the country and saying we are playing really good football in the Salt City. So those are the two schools I don't know. I'm still deciding which one I fall on. While I decide, you tell me where you are, Owen. I I think As I'm on the side night. that that we are looking at a team that is good. Not incredible, not 2018. This is a good football team. And it's fun to see the best since 2018 again. And even though it's only a couple of years back, that 2018 season – barring something absolutely astounding this year, is still going to be the bar moving forward. But to be in that, this is the best since 2018. The first 2-0 and start since 2018. I mean, there's, what, 50 undefeated teams right now? You get to see those graphics on Twitter that say, retweet if your team's here, and there's the big orange block S right there. Yeah. That's pretty awesome. Exciting. I'm going to ride the high as long as I can. I definitely am not going to go out here and say that the – Maybe this Louisville team isn't great, and they beat a pretty bad UConn team, and this isn't necessarily a really, really good Syracuse football team. There is a case for that. I understand the grounds for it. I see where people are coming from. I want to choose to stay positive right here. I do like what I've seen on so many fronts with this team, so I'm going to side. Uh, in the latter portion of your two arguments, I do think it's a little bit in between there, which I know is such a boring answer, but I'm going to say it's a tweener, but I am leaning towards this is a really good football team, uh, at least in comparison to what we've seen uh, and on the projection of what you were just saying, right? Headed in the right direction, which is really what you wanted to take away from this year. I lean the same way. Uh, I don't know necessarily that it will be uh, a huge blowout, but – I think Syracuse wins this game, and I'll give you my rationale after I read this advertisement. BetOnline.net is your number one source for all your pro and college football betting needs and sports info this season. Find all of the latest football league developments, game matchups, news, and podcasts, including this year's Week 3 games. Bet online is also your continued source for all your sporting wagering information, including live betting, esports, and scores. The fastest and easiest way to check in on all your favorite sports and events, including MLB, MMA, boxing, and golf. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action. Bet online where the game starts. All right. So I think this is a Syracuse win. Uh, and don't get me wrong, Purdue is a really, really talented team. Uh, and they came really close to beating a team that's probably better than Syracuse right now in Penn State. Uh, and I think that Purdue could waltz into the Dome and win this game. But the reason I think Syracuse wins is that it's just a really good matchup for SU, uh, especially on the defensive side of the ball for the Orange. You look at this Purdue offense, you see a really good quarterback. Aiden O'Connell is fantastic. Uh, he has been he was really good last year for them. He nearly threw 4,000 yards, 28 touchdowns last season. Hasn't thrown a pick this year. Five touchdowns, no picks. Uh, he's already thrown for nearly 600 yards on the season. He's been really good. But the thing that I keep looking at, one of two things, is there are a lot of guys who have caught the football on this team, 15 guys who have caught a football. Only one of them has double-digit catches. That guy's Charlie Jones. He's caught the ball 21 times for the Boilermakers this season for a career high of 286 yards and four touchdowns. Before being a Boilermaker, he was at Buffalo in 2018, two seasons in Iowa, and now he finds himself in Purdue where he's only got – it's the first time he's gotten a real shot. Uh, and he's making the most of it. He's a really talented receiver. But 
Syracuse has arguably the best secondary in the ACC in terms of Deuce and Garrett Williams and even Elijah Clark uh, and Jihad Carter and Jeremiah Wilson. Everybody's there. That's a really tough secondary to get behind. And if you're telling me you don't believe Syracuse can take away one receiver, I don't think we're watching the same team. This is a secondary that is absolutely fantastic. Now, that's not all. This rushing attack, they don't have one guy that's going to beat you. They've got three guys who they could give the ball to and are all talented. Uh, they've got three guys who have pretty much the same amount of carries, pretty much the same amount of yards, all have a touchdown, uh, and they're all good. But they don't have one guy that's more talented than your linebackers and more talented than your defensive line, and it's going to go out there and beat you. That's a good matchup for a team that has arguably the best linebackers in the ACC, some of the best linebackers in the country. And Derek McDonald is going to have a huge test. In the first game, he's going to start against a real team, Sarah UConn, but it's true. So if he steps up and the secondary knows what to do in taking out Charlie Jones, it's going to be the same thing that was done to Syracuse last year if Syracuse executes on defense this time around. It, last year against SU, if you were an opposing defense, it has forced them to throw the ball. And Syracuse is going to have to do that and then just lock down the one receiver they throw to pretty much every play. Are they going to get creative? Yeah, I think Jeff Brom's a good coach. But I think the the, the tides are in, in turn of, the, uh, of SU right now. So when I look at this, I, I'm not sure – I am as sold at this point. I'm getting on this being a, I'm a pumped. clear cut Syracuse win. I, I think this is going to be a close game. I will I save. Do too. Don't get me wrong. It's I think my final decision. Necessarily. Yeah, I think I'm going to save my final decision for Friday. I'm not going to put myself up. Oh, against sure. The, I mean, this uh, is Tuesday. Up against the choice right now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I think this is going to be a very close game. And I, I your, the points you bring up in terms of, you know, Charlie Jones catches every pass. Yes, they, they have this running back committee uh, that is solid and can give you different looks and things of that nature. Yes, I think that all can play to Syracuse definitely defensively. But I also look at, you know, we talk about how important this game is for Syracuse. This is of equal importance for Purdue. Uh, and that is something we just talked uh, or saw sure. in the press conference looking up to this game, right? This is their first, you know, this is a big road test for them. Not necessarily the first, but this is a huge road test for them. Um, the Big Ten, at least their Big Ten schedule, is not incredible at this point. Uh, if I remember correctly, I'll have to pull it back up uh, uh, in a second. They they don't necessarily play the toughest route of the Big Ten, uh, which is fine for them. But it means that this is an opportunity too to help you know solidify an extra win and, and get going and be at two and one and maybe be in a possible ranking conversation a week or two out. Uh, this is a team that's got a ton to play for here as well, which is why I'm not entirely sure I can go out and say maybe as confident as you just did of this Syracuse win just yet, because I, I think that there is so much on both sides up on the table. I will say, I think Syracuse can match up with with this defense pretty well. And I think that they can, if done right, I think they can have a really, really solid day against this Purdue defense who... We'll, we'll talk about loses their best linebacker. He's kind of a combo guy, plays also as a safety, uh, so really has sort of a combo role that uh, I was reading. Who wrote this? Let me give him a proper shout-out to not be uh, taking anything from someone else. Uh, Drew Schneider from uh, Purdue's SB Nation was just talking about how they don't have another guy that can mimic that same – position that he plays right he's playing this hybrid some linebacker some safety just because of his versatility and the type of player he is uh no one else can really do that so it sort of forces them uh to to shift defenses completely and schneider said that it, it could honestly be a 425 or a 335 uh depending on sort of what you look yeah. at which when you have to see a guy and yes this is the second week he's out but last week's game I mean, it was just like playing a UConn, right? It's not really telling you all too much. Uh, this is going to be their first test of what is this defense without Jalen Graham. Uh, and I don't exactly know what it is yet. So I think this is a really, really good opportunity for Syracuse's offense to be able to exploit a defense that is dealing with some things and having to go through some changes. Changes big enough to almost be shifting schemes, which is massive 
Uh, so I think that this is a really, really good opportunity on offense that Syracuse has to exploit a defense that is, you know, going through a lot of new changes and, and trying to figure out, you know, how this works and, and how you sort of go in terms of replacing a guy that uh, I was reading and hearing that this is like, if you look on this defensive side for Purdue, there's one name that you circle of who cannot get hurt, who is that, that defense that leadership in that, and that is Jalen Graham. So how they recover, we're really not sure yet. And Syracuse has a golden opportunity to exploit a team while they're down. Uh, and I am not above stepping on someone when they're down, when it comes to getting to three and all and possibly becoming a ranked team after this week. I want to look back on uh, just the SU defense, and then I want to get into yeah. Jalen Graham and, and the rest of the Purdue defense for a second. Um, I think this could be a game where the nation finally gives the respect to the SU secondary that it deserves. I feel like Mike Kell has gotten it, and yeah. those playing around him, of course, and, and Marlowe and Stefan Thompson have gotten it. But – Garrett Williams and Deuce Chestnut, despite being a part of DBU uh, and being the successors of Trill Williams and Andre Sisko and Afatu Milifanu, who are all off to the NFL, they haven't been looked at as some of the best players in the league. And if Syracuse puts out a dominant performance in front of the home crowd, who should be there? If the home crowd yeah. doesn't show up, I'm going to be livid. And that includes you, Owen. No, I'm just kidding. I um, have work. I will be watching the game, <laughs> but I, I do have to work. Um, I they they everybody better show up. Uh, I might Please. even go up because I just want to see them. Um, if you go up, I'll quit my job. All right, sweet. Um, they are. I mean, this should be the game that this defense puts the nation on on notice and says that they can beat anybody. This could be the year, and it all starts with this game. That's the crazy part. Um, it's it's all contingent on how they play in game three. And, and we kind of knew that coming into the year. When you looked at the schedule, it was first the first uh, route difference is game one. They win or lose, changes the entire complexity of the year. They win that game. They win game two. Everybody knew that was going to happen. Now, the real test, game three, game four, Purdue, Virginia, back-to-back, -back, we're going to find out who this team is. And if they come out on Saturday and they are just ravenous, it's going to be a really, really fun year. Uh, yeah, I really Jeff hope Brom was saying it. Jeff Brom was saying it. That that was the one thing. He's like, I don't think there's all too much to worry about in a dome except for the crowd and the noise. The noise is something that they're trying to prepare for this week and something it's it's difficult to prepare for dome noise because it is different than outside noise. Uh, and when you know you were there, I was there week one. And that noise was really, really solid. And what I forget the exact attendance, what it ended up being. But I mean, that was loud. I uh, believe it was like 37,000. Yeah, you had Malik jump uh, or that Louisville offense and Malik really struggle, had to shift to, you know, a silent count. You got them to jump off sides or to a uh, false start, I believe, on their first third down. Like there were some huge crowd moments in that game. And that was with, as you said, 37. I am almost at the page. Uh if you can get, and I don't think it is outlandish to think that this is a genuine possibility, I think you can get 42 or 43 this week. Why not in more? That Pack that uh, place. I think, Sol sell I think it Brent out. Axe might have been talking about it, and that was sort of the threshold he was looking at. But I think this has got to be a 40 plus thousand day. Has to be. In the carry zone because I, of the significance of this game. Yeah. They're winning. I, I get the point. I get the 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 they don't win, I don't go thing. But now they're winning. Go, go while yeah. they're hot, dude. Like this is the chance. Go now. Um, right to noon. Game. There are some. Get there out. are some teams that get a hundred thousand fans at games. Why can't Syracuse get fifty? I don't get it. Uh, all right, let's move on. Let's talk some Boilermaker defense. Uh, you already talked about Jalen Graham a bunch, yeah, and he is such an X factor for the defense. I don't wish an injury upon anybody, so I really hope that he's back and neither do you this podcast. No. We hope Jalen Graham is back on the field soon. Um, and they're saying so, he's, you know, he's only a couple weeks, so he will be back uh, barring something happening in his recovery. Like he, yeah, it was said to be three or four weeks, I believe was the initial, uh, the initial timetable. So this is week two. So he's maybe next week back or the following week. So he really he is approaching that time. Week. Yeah. So we hope he's back soon. Regardless, Syracuse does catch a lucky break and they'll miss him. 
Uh, and like you said, they this is such a huge blow that they're going to have to change their defense. Uh, and I don't know what they're going to do, but that is so advantageous for Syracuse. And for a Garrett Schrader that's playing out of his mind this year, uh, and a Sean Tucker that continues to just show that he's the best player in the country. And Sean wants more. That's the crazy part. Yeah. That UConn game, he didn't get nearly as much as he wanted. And he wants so much more. And he might put, he might make an example out of Purdue. So maybe he just takes over. I mean, this game could go a multitude of ways, but I stick to the point as of now that this is a great matchup for SU uh, yeah. in terms of defense. And now without the best player on the Boilers defense, probably for the SU offense as well. This is an incredible opportunity, as you were saying. Like, it really is. You talk about the significance of this game and you look at the the chance that Syracuse has and a golden chance when you're you're catching a team at the perfect time, right? Uh, I think Dino has always said that that was why, you know, loosely, that's why they lost to Louisville was because it was, they were beaten up at the end of the year. Uh, and now they can win because they're healthy. Uh, this is the break, right? This is the break that you, in theory, have been giving Louisville uh, when they have beaten up on you later in the season. Uh, you're getting that break right here. You're catching them without the player, right? I think, yes, Syracuse has more options to pick up the slack, but this is a Michael Jones injury. Uh, that is sort of what you're trying to replace. And we talk about how Michael can lift everyone around him. Uh, he He's kind of... Oh, can I call him? I don't know. Can we go get the thrones and call him the Night King and that he just lifts everyone up? Uh, I don't know if I want to do that, but he really does. I will give him that nod. Uh, it's sort of like what you do uh, in uh, with a guy like Jalen Graham, and it, it is a tough thing to try and work through and figure something out. Uh, I believe the, the guy, it's Kane, is the guy that has sort of been replacing um Graham in that first game so that is something you can look to they have a pretty loaded secondary in terms of they play a lot of guys back uh it'll be interesting to see how that affects the passing game versus the running game for Syracuse what they can get uh versus a three or four man front depending on what look Purdue ends up giving um because they really do they keep guys back and their secondary is pretty uh pretty loaded, I guess, in terms of numbers and just the way they sort of position themselves. Uh, I, I'm curious to see how that affects Schrader in the passing game, if it's going to be some shorter passes and things of that nature, which, you know, is, I would say, his strength, right? We saw last week, yes, he can air it out a little bit, but that doesn't mean that his strength is airing the ball out by any means yet. Uh, I think that this defense might permit him the chance to, to do what he's really comfortable with in those quick passes, or if you've got guys out, uh, he can roll. I think that his mobility is a huge asset in this game. Not that it's not ever a huge asset, but Schrader's mobility in this game is, is going to continue to add to the difficulties of this team, especially uh, when you look at them trying to replace a Jalen Graham who is outstanding in run defense and outstanding in pass defense. Like He really does it all defensively for them uh and you're now trying to figure out how do you replace him uh and they're replacing him with i believe a safety uh so that sort of shows that you sort of miss out on this guy that's going to be a huge facet and difficulty to to work through uh on defense in terms of being able to step in and be almost like an extra linebacker but also drop back and be really really solid in coverage and now you've got to sub him for a true safety you kind of miss out on that run defense a little bit. So look for Garrett to be able to roll a little bit and to scramble a little bit better. Look for, a, you know, some opportunities from Sean to step it up and have another, you know, maybe a better game. Maybe he'll be pleased with his 115 yards this time around. Uh, who knows? But I think that this, this loss uh, in terms of Jalen Graham for Purdue is what they will circle as one of the key reasons that this game goes against them if Syracuse walks out victorious. Great. All right. Well, that's all we got. Thanks for making Lockdown Syracuse your first listen every day. Go get more on the ACC by making Lockdown ACC your second listen every day. Host Candace Cooper and the local experts of Lockdown take you across the ACC in 30 minutes. Make Lockdown ACC your second listen. I'm Matt Bonaparte. That's Owen Valentine. I'll be back tomorrow. Owen takes a little hiatus. But we bring on 
uh, Mike Carmen of the Lafayette Courier Journal to tell us more about Purdue and then get us filled in. So stick out for that uh, or look out for that and uh, we'll see you.